Recently, I've been playing dead games a little too much, which means we're doing some more. It's time to play some weird games and then leave the most honest review possible. To start, I found a battle royale game with less than 100 people online. Cursed FOAD was pretty big back when we were all locked inside, but it seems since people actually have had the choice of either playing this game or going outside, the player base has slowly died. There's only 26 people in my lobby. 26. I downloaded this game late into the British night, but I queued into a match and ended up actually doing alright. Come on, brother. Come on. Oh, I'm in the open. Pants down. Oh, there he is. That effect that pretty much led to me having my pants down in the open was my Shadow Cloak ability. These different abilities that all the other characters have is like Cursed's way of trying to say they're different than the other Thousand Battle Royale games when they're really not. Bro, why does he look like that? <laughs> Let me turn him... Oh my god, please say you're drivable. Why is the shift button beep? I gotta go run that guy over. Alright, the car probably needs a bit of an oil change. Come here, buddy. That death was my second game, and probably the last time I ever drove one of those cars. The third game was a squads game, but I didn't actually find a squad, so I, I was alone, meaning I definitely wasn't getting a win here. The size of your squad is smaller than the recommended for this mode. If you continue, players will be randomly- Yeah, that's exactly what I want. Where are my teammates? There's 15 people in the lobby. Where are my teammates? You telling me this this beautiful man couldn't get any friends? I then got a win. There he is. There he is. Are oh, you finished, brother? What the f is that? Apart from opening two crates, I didn't really look into the game further than actually playing it. So all I can really say is the graphics are next level. I gotta say, for such a huge man with such huge cheeks, he he's very f***ing agile. You have to respect it. Oh, you run faster without a gun. Yeah, that does make sense. It's a lot like Enlisted, where it feels so empty with bots everywhere, but the game itself actually looks pretty realistic. I honestly don't know if each game had a different map or what, whatever it was, but the desert part was definitely the best. That shit was beautiful and had the best fights aside from one strange encounter. Um, I... What the f***? was that another guy did eventually kill the other fella in a metal ball i have no idea how but i i did hear him do it and painfully killed him while he was literally looting the guy i ran away from fuck what's that is that a cigar i got a cigar in my mouth <laughs> i'm in a life or death scenario sometimes you gotta calm yourself down This is awkward. But that's what this battle royale shit is all about. You know, ruining each other's happiness. At some point, I climbed this tower, given it was near the middle of the zone, and decided to just wait there, proned, until the last guy showed himself. Oh, there's only one other person. Okay. That guy was probably also a bot. But any bots or mobile players aside, it was one of the best dead games I've played in ages. And the man ass filling up your screen almost all the time was a big bonus. But it's time for the review. It's actually surprisingly good and the man ass made it that much better. The 8 out of 10. Okay, this looks interesting. I guess that's a... Okay, yeah, I think this is the game. Yep, I'm gonna try this. How bad can it possibly be? Revelations 2012. Some of the best graphics I've ever seen, and some even better reviews. 
Revelations 2012 is like having an out-of-body experience of having your prostate examined before the doctor suddenly gets angry and smashes your nuts with a tennis racket, hilarious, painful, and entirely pointless. There's a certain poetry to even the worst video game. A game like Rogue Warrior or Bad Rats is still entertaining in the same way that watching an automobile accident is entertaining. It's a my goodness, just look at this sort of spectacle. It draws you in, compels you to watch, and in doing so, it keeps you entertained. There is value, however little, in that. After all, what is a game's purpose if not to entertain? One that doesn't sink as low as to become so bad it's good, nor does it rise high enough to become decent. There weren't rave reviews for this masterpiece, so I, I had to try it out. And uh, lo and behold, every single thing in that review and all the other reviews came true. Even after I figured out how to command around my zombie boys, and how to switch weapons and destroy respawn beacons, I never felt any purpose to win. Playing an online battleground game. What? Welcome uh -huh. to Battlegrounds. What keeps zapping me, man? And I never actually figured out how to win or even progress. I got some kills, then walked around for about 30 minutes, and then quit, feeling like I just spent 30 minutes staring at a wall like some kind of blind dog. If I had to say one thing good about the game, it would be the gunplay. And even that's a bit of a push. 1 out of 10. What? After that game, I really wanted to check out a classic game with one hell of a history. Postal 3. Postal. In a town called Catharsis. A lone wolf. Recently, Postal 3 was removed from sale on Steam due to some DRM issues. The main Postal developer, a apart from for Postal 3, tweeted about the removal and summed up what most people think about the game. I actually managed to download Postal 3 off some random site and somehow spent about an hour trying to enjoy it. Okay, do not tab out. Awesome park day at Dave's until <laughs> oh, okay. Um, it's gonna be the easiest shit of my life. I don't know how to crouch. I, I, I still don't know how to crouch. There we go. They still think I'm over there. It, it just isn't for me. And the best part was probably the text cutscenes, which broke up some very painful gameplay. Say, that's a perfectly good box of grenades. I'd hate to see them go to waste. <laughs> what are these cutscenes? <sighs> Bro, what the fuck? What the fuck is going on? It's making me go this direction. I can't stop. I'm tethered to this fucking object, man. At the next stage of what I can only assume was a tutorial, I sprayed these poor fellas with some pepper spray, at which point they fought back by crashing my game again. After this, I was kind of wondering whether it was my fault that I wasn't enjoying the game, so I tried looking online for some positive opinions. Within a few minutes, I came across this Reddit poll discussing which Postal game was the worst. Because Postal 3 is simply so beautiful, they weren't even including it in the poll, as that would make the poll pointless. And even then, people were still commenting Postal 3. How am I even meant to review this, man? It's so fucking bad, it doesn't even deserve a word. One. Hold on. This break. Ooh, yeah. Hmm. Lovely. Next, I played one of the weirdest games I've seen in a while. The game itself is called Infestation, but it has a bunch of different games all combined into one, like Survival, Campaign, and the one I started with, Battle Royale. Bro, what? What? <laughs> okay, bro. I said I started with Battle Royale, but the truth is I first loaded into a game with one other person, so I switched to Hong Kong servers where there were actually a couple more players. But we ended up staying in the practice lobby while waiting for other people for a good 20 minutes where I wish I could say I learned the game, uh, but I've never been egoed harder in my life. 
Bro, he's protected. What? This game is long dead. So, like a lot of dying games, most of the people left seem to enjoy this game a bit too much. And they honestly probably never left, meaning they're slightly better than me. <laughs> Wait, does he think I'm dead? Thankfully, the game eventually did start, and the fun began. I picked up some items, ran around, and then got destroyed from behind. Oh. Okay. Okay. I have no idea how people play this game. Just respectfully. It feels like one of the worst games I'd ever played in my life, and I played H1Z1 for four years straight. Just everything about it felt like it was made in 2010, but it's barely two years old. If I stop even just one of you from downloading this human rights violation of a game, I'll def I'll die a happy man. Looking at the reviews for this game is honestly more enjoyable than actually playing it, and I'd rather do a 24 hour stream on Postal 3 than give this game another go. Instead of writing my own review, I'm just gonna let you guys listen to what some other people had to say. Slid down a hill. Got banned for speed hacking 10 out of 10. The deinstallation works fine. I would rather buy WinRAW. Scam? Before we get to some exhilarating games, I had to suffer for just a little bit more. Okay, 80 reviews, and they're all mostly negative. Hello, my computer wants to die now. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. 10 out of infinite, good game. This is Time Ramseed, a 2015 game that ticks every single box. Oh my god, bowling so young. Fucking hell, it's E-Rob. I'd genuinely rather play that fucking duck game than whatever this was. I just walked around some asset flip dungeon, opening doors and occasionally being jump scared by some child with E-Rob's hairline. Eventually, I got to the part where something actually happens, and that's all that happened. After I killed everything, the girl just stayed there in the middle, and no other door opened. I still don't know if the game was frozen, glitched out, or maybe that was just the end. I genuinely don't know. I walked around for a while, hoping I was just missing something, but at some point I gave up. <laughs> okay, bro. I wouldn't even call this a game. It's more like a visual novel depicting what the most pointless game in existence could potentially look like. Wait, that's literally the fucking default gun sound in Unreal Engine. Time Ramesseed. Didn't have much going on, so I wanted something more exciting. And I found it. Oh, Airport Simulator. <laughs> I've, I've seen better looking games. <laughs> I have to try it. Oh my day, overwhelmingly negative. Oh, this is the one. Drive a cheap vehicle at a snail's pace to the plane. Wait. Drive another vehicle to the plane. Wait, wait, wait. Drive another vehicle to the plane. Wait. Repeat until mind melts. Oh, this sounds like my type of game. If you've ever wanted to drive some high-speed cars, then play some Airport Simulator 2014. The most beautiful game ever made. When the game says you'll be simulating an airport, it basically means you'll be driving around. A lot. Eventually, you can actually upgrade the cars, meaning they'll be automated for you, but after about an hour and a half of grinding, I upgraded about five cars. Uh-oh. Okay. Nice one. You know, the airports would have a lot less fucking delays if they whacked a Lambo on the front of this and not some shitty tractor. By that point, four planes were in my airport and one was actually trying to leave. But no matter what I do, I couldn't get it to work. I don't think this is how you're gonna do it, but... 
Bro, that is perfect. The game kept telling me to pull the plane into this circle, and after about 20 minutes, I just gave up. But up to this point, I was genuinely committed. There's just something about the progress in this game that makes you think that the game's eventually gonna get better, but it never does. The way the game describes itself on Steam is a bigger lie than those chocolate boxes your nan always had filled with sewing shit. It is the worst simulator game I've ever touched in my life. Now, I can just imagine all the devs sitting around a table playtesting their newly created game. They played this. Oh, look, I'm late. Nice one. Suck my dick and balls. For the last game, I was looking for something with a voice chat. Something to recreate that beautiful SCP vibe. And I found Intruder. Players are split into two teams, the guards and the spies. Spies obviously have to be stealthy, while guards try to place traps and fake mannequins. Wait, that's a fucking fake player. I joined a bunch of different servers and started off as a spy. We're on a train through the lovely countryside of probably England. It looks like somewhere in Coventry. All right, let me jump through that window. Okay. Ah. <gasps> I secured... We secured the package. We got it. It's over. The thing is, this game takes a lot of game sense that my slow brain couldn't quite handle at 4 a.m. in the morning. So I ended up dying a little more than I'd like to admit. Let's go. Oh, fuck. I just saw someone lose their... Oh my god! That space? Yeah. It's time to take this shortcut. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> the mansion map was so obviously clear of every other map. And it was there where I actually started to understand what I was really meant to do. Alright, new game. Join Cox or join Pussies? Cox. Oh, brother. What the fuck is going on? Oh. Bro. Easy. I did play another map, this time in the forest, but I got on the car like my teammates were doing, and I got railed as a result. Oh. Who's that? Is that a teammate? It was not a teammate. This game came out all the way back in 2019, and I'm genuinely surprised there weren't more people playing it. Fundamentally, there's nothing wrong with it, and the reviews are decent too, but there's one problem. The game costs more than four fucking meal deals, which is about three meal deals too many, and that's probably the reason almost all the lobbies are empty. For once though, the devs of this game are actually still alive, and are updating the game every couple months, so I wouldn't be surprised if the game eventually does go entirely free. 15 quid too much, but actually very underrated. 7 out of 10. Ah. Oh. Wait, who the fuck? Okay, we gotta have a talk. Most of these games were recommended by you, so if there's a particular genre or game you wanna see me test my sanity on, let me know in the comments or over on my Patreon. Thank you so much for watching and, uh, you know, subscribe if you haven't already.